The Twin Cities have always had a great sports scene. There's a lot to do here. And on National Bowling Day, Egan, Minnesota hosts the BowlerX.com PWBA Twin Cities Open. Five of the world's best bowlers compete for a tour title and prize money. This is Dave Ryan alongside PWBA Tour Stars Kelly Buick and Stephanie Johnson. And here is our final five. Josie Barnes looks for a second title of the season against Rookie of the Year frontrunner Jordan Richard. Janet O'Keefe makes her tour best sixth championship round appearance. Rosie Ostrepo hopes for her fourth career title. And the top seed Liz Colkin makes her third straight TV appearance a tour best. Let's meet our top seed Liz Colkin out with Stephanie Johnson. All right, Liz, this is your third consecutive TV show this season. What would you amount to your success so far? Well, I have to give product to the Brunswick bowling balls I'm throwing. I've been having really good shapes out there. I've been, been really on top of my game fundamentals, and I've just been taking it one week at a time. It's been going really well. And your first time as a number one seed, are you going to approach this match any differently? It's definitely different than coming in as a number five seed. You get to see the transition out there this time. I'll have to pay attention offset and make sure I'm ready to throw good shots out there. All right, well, best of luck to you. Thank Back you. to you, Dave. Stephanie Liz, thanks. So, Kelly, U.S. Open, we called it. Boardwalk Bowl in Orlando. At one time, 64th place after the first round. She ran the ladder on TV for her first career major. Yeah, first ever going for her major championship, the U.S. Open, coming up from the number of the seed, working her way all the way to the top to that crown title and that green jacket. We are ready for bowling. Jordan Richard. Josie Barnes, head-to-head, -head starting us off here in Egan, Minnesota. Standing room only crowd for a second straight week on tour. And Josie Barnes from Nashville, associate head coach at Vanderbilt, gets us started. With a 7-10, Kelly, wow. Yeah, a little disheartening, Dave, how starting off the match, great pocket shot. Great execution, but unfortunately, the dreaded bed post, the 7-10 split. The good news is it's only the first frame. Plenty of time to make up for it. Get your feet wet, get comfortable, and take it one shot at a time. Takes the 10, leads the center. Weeks. We've seen Jordan Richard on TV. Four seed here today to come see Michigan. Not far from Ann Arbor. And a former star at Arkansas State. Rookie season and she's already ninth in points. Tremendous year. Cross it over. That's a high shot. Maybe split on the 310. On Jordan's first ball. Ball with great camera work by our crew. High up on the head pin. Not enough skin through the front. 310 baby split, as you said. Fit it through both pins to cover the spare. Ryan does it. That's a nice early conversion. A confidence boost for Jordan Richard. As we check our feature for the sport, oil pattern today, Kelly. Yeah, there's our Kegel Ford Flex machine going down the lane itself. Nice and slowly stripping and conditioning the lanes that the women participate on. To the viewers viewing in, something new this year, we have the 3D image down here below. 37 foot pattern, medium volume and scoring pace was very medium. It was a short pattern, but it played kind of long. So if you look kind of here, later on on that picture, we'll get close to it of how the lanes are gonna play and how they might break down. This 3D image, you see kind of like a little escalator going up. Right where it tears off is where the straighter players will start to play. From there, so over on this graph, here's the escalator going up the stairs, right where it teetered off. This is where the track will be built, going all the way down. And then the ladies will tend to creep further inside or left, steeper through the front with larger angles because the pattern's only 37 feet. It played a lot longer because the lanes were newly installed only four weeks ago. Back to Josie Barnes. Oh. Like that a lot better for good reason. All 10 back for her first strike of the match. Josie sliding 18, 11 at the arrows. You see where I said board seven, here's 10 over here. Seven outside of that, you can see the ball picking up and changing directions. Packs 10, splits the eight, nine. 
will keep control of that distance. 37 feet, that's just at the end of that first hash marker. 22 games to make the shot. Late huh. messenger. Across the deck, there goes number 10. That scout knocks it out. Yeah, it's like what I said, Dave. Put a stamp on it, it was delivered. Watch right here, a little tighter angle. Six pin falls in front, little messenger. Head pin off the sidewall. Postal system delivered. <laughs> First class. Jordan's response. Wow. High flush, crunches 10 back into the pit. Great shot. Great shot off her hand. Good footwork, 16 at the arrows. Almost the exact same break point as Josie. 10 straight back. Jordan, much higher rev rate, a little bit higher ball speed. She creates hold by having a larger angle through the front portion of the lane. So she's sliding a good 10 to 15 boards further inside of what Josie is. It sure did, Jordan. Any player rolls a 300 game during this telecast and receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. Back to Josie. Emotional week for her. 12 years ago in this very center, she met her husband, Kyle, because they both won a high school bowling tournament. Boys and the girls. Good memories. 3610. You heard her though, push a lot. That's a flatter pad on 37 feet. Not gonna have much room miss. This is where you need to miss outward or to the right. Not inside. Four step approach. Really worked on hinging the ball into her swing. Tendency, sometimes she gets it too far forward, but again, there's that great arm swing. Left arm is nice and relaxed, heads down. Good slide, extended knee bend after she releases the ball and really extensive follow through. Covers nicely. Back then, she won a $15,000 scholarship prize for winning that tournament. She and Kyle were friends for a while, and then I just started dating. But how, how cool is that? Come back to this building. Well, she told us honestly, she didn't like him back then. <laughs> <laughs> Took a while to grow on her. We had a great picture they showed us. 12 years ago, and then they took one today in honor of that. Meeting in this very center. She'd like to have some more history here at Egan, but wow, we were seeing the 710 for a second time. Back to back 710. Oh. This is dreadful here. You could see a little further right. Ball's really slow responding off the end of the pattern. Deflects a little bit more towards the nine pin. Six pin lays in front. The move there is trying to get the ball to start up sooner to roll heavier through the pocket. So it's a two and one move to the right, a little bit more aggressive with the ball speed. See if she can kick out one of those pins. Or as usual, try to strike and knock down all 10. Not the time you want to practice your seven tens. No. At all. So here's Jordan Richard feeling pretty good about herself. Looks for the turkey in the fifth frame to go up by 47 pins. Focused and locked in. She liked it, and some help. Little kick of that 2 8 to roll out there, Dave. Jordan Richer, five-step approach, keeps the ball waist high. Walks past it in the swing, heel toe. You can see her body's right here and all that knee bends slightly. She's got so much upper body strength. Left arm's nice and relaxed. Not a big slide, but she is a very strong, athletic young lady. And again, due to her heavier rev rate, she's able to get the ball back from that spot. Catch a lucky break, roll the 2 8. Five bagger and a 57 pin lead. Brooklyn strike, why not? It's all working right now for the front runner for Rookie of the Year on the PWBA Tour. 
And this packed house in Eagan, Minnesota appreciates the great bowling of Jordan Richard. Struggles for Josie Barnes. 57, Ben Lee for the former star at Arkansas State. Not far from the great city of Minneapolis, here in Eagan, Minnesota. EWBA action continues on CBS Sports Network. Josie Barnes, wow, first and fifth frame, seven tens and open frames. That led to a big lead for Jordan Richard by 57 pins. And Kelly, she's working on it open. Strikes now are imperative. Yeah, she found her way a little bit on this right lane. Came up high, looked 3-6-10, made the spare. Let's see if she gets lined up. Right there, excellent shot. Powers the pocket, bringing 10 pins, stands alone. Her ball speed right now is a little bit of a factor. If she could be a little bit firmer, might be able to knock that out. You can see the ball really spinning and rotating down the lane as it gets taller into that blue spot on the ball. It's trying to release that energy and find its positive spin point there in the bowling ball itself. Just want to find more power in that de delivery to knock out the 10. It's got the Vanderbilt Anchor Down logo there for a spare ball. That's a 10 pin. Vandy won the national championship in St. Louis this year. Back to Stephanie. After speaking with the Ebonite ball reps during the commercial break, it appears Josie's seeing some early hook on the left lane, so she's going to go to a stronger, cleaner ball that hopefully restores some energy down lane for her. Thanks for that news, Stephanie. The early hook on the left lane, she's going to get away from that hook spot. So go to that bigger ball, that stronger ball, bigger core, maybe more stronger cover. Get a little away from it, find more oil through the front part of the lane, but still allow the ball to pick up in the middle lane, change directions, and roll forward to that 1-3 pocket. Excellent move. Great for the news. Stephanie appreciates so much. Josie, you see bigger ball. Gets a little bit further closer to Jordan where she's sliding. You can see that bright yellow. Now it stands taller into that black and white zone. The ball as it stands up taller. Releases that energy. She liked it. Fist pumped in the air. See if she sticks with it on the right lane. But Jordan, working on five in a row, looks in the seventh frame to extend her lead even more. Fourth last week in St. Pete. Looks for a six-bagger, 67-pin lead. Oh, avoid a trouble with a split. And just the four-pin now to deal with for Jordan Richard. Way, way left inside. So I talked about that escalator of that pattern going up. I said board seven is roughly the break point. 37 feet, the rule of 31 for you know. 37 minus 31 gives a break point of six-ish down the lane. Anything inside of that might push but need to get it close there. Converts the four pin, no problem, and still 56 pin lead. Tomorrow at 5 Eastern, the toughest sport on dirt takes stage in Oklahoma. 2017 world champ and last year's Express Employment Professionals Classic winner, Jess Lockwood, looks to defend his title right here on CBS Sports Network. Bowlers try to knock down all 10. That is the most exciting eight seconds in sport. Eight, 10, it's just... A thrill ride, literally. That, that was a big bull, Dave. High on the head pin, leaves a 3-6. Jordan's now running into a little bit of transition. Lane's breaking down. Heavier ball, let's see what her adjustment is. How focused her eyes are. Keeping forward, keeping forward. Blinks and then looks at her target. Now, to me, as a coach looking in, I'm thinking she's seeing the entire path of the ball. And then at the last moment, just rechecks and looks at her target. 3-6 takes care of business, no problem. There's a big watch party going on at 10 Pin Alley right now in Tecumseh, Michigan, outside Ann Arbor. Jordan looking pretty good. You know, Mom Jody and Dad Kenny are watching closely. Mom Jody's pretty nervous. She <laughs> was in the bowling center last week in St. Pete, couldn't actually watch the bowling live. One of those parents who just can't quite stay in the arena. You know, just got to be a little further out, sometimes in the car watching. High hit, 4-7 leave. Again, right now, the difference between Jordan and Josie is just her ball speed. Jordan's a bit firmer, stronger through the front portion of the lane. That more ball speed means it has less time to slow down, keeps it on its path a little bit longer. Packs a bit more power. Josie, great shot, high hit, 4-7, though. We'll switch that plastic ball and shoot to add the spare to her score. 
Joe's was a four seed. Beat Danielle McHugh in the top seed in East Hartford for her title this year. A 300 game for Josie this week here in Egan, Minnesota. Not bad. No, not bad at all. 32 lane center. We just used enough lanes for the 32 competitors. She was just a pair or two left of me. All were packed in. Only 300 so far in the tournament. Impressive. Love the final groove right here. Well, she's in a huge hole against Jordan Richard. All 10 back finds the pocket. Things just start exploding off of the one through pocket the way she had hoped, certainly. Yeah, but Dave and the philosophy, and X is an X. Right there, though, Shannon O'Keefe, beautiful picture up there, front runner for player of the year. She's qualified third this week. She will meet the winner of this match. Jordan Richard extending her lead for the shot here. Wow. 60 feet to success for Jordan Richard. As she pounds the block, get it all 10 back. Watch right here, slide, 15 at the arrow, 16. There is that seven break point. Six pin pushes in front. If you can hear it as well as I do, it was a crisp strike. 10 straight back. Little aha moment right there. Reconnect. Six pin late here for Jordan Richard. Told us in our pre-match interview, Kelly, that she learned a little bit from her experience last week in St. Pete. Trust herself. That was a big message to us. Correct, yes, Dave. You know, it's, it's vital to have the help out here of the ball reps, friends, parents, people you bowl with, and teammates. However, it still comes down to the owner responsibility of delivering the bowling ball themselves, and you have to trust what you see and what you can do with that bowling ball itself. So maybe made her a wrong ball choice last week. She wasn't going to let that happen again this week. Ball change on the fill ball. Looking for a different reaction, just gaining some information. Jordan Richard has wrapped up this match. Impressive bowling. For the front runner for PWBA Tour Rookie of the Year, and the four seed will advance over Josie Barnes. A tour title is this year. Janet O'Keefe, sixth championship round appearance, front runner for Player of the Year. A tremendous season for Shannon. Jordan Richard takes on Janet O'Keefe when we return to Egan, Minnesota. Well done, Janet O'Keefe. Shannon reporter last week on TV this week. Stephanie Johnson joins us as our reporter this week as well. Great to have you versatile star bowlers do both <laughs> roles. It's awesome. Here's Shannon into her Vikings purple today. What a season for Shannon O'Keefe. Ten pin to start. You called it, Dave, last week. You said you come to the show this week. You're, next week, you're going to be on it. And there, there's Shannon O'Keefe now. First shot, first frame. Deeper in the area where Jordan Richard is. Six pin falls flat in front. Flat 10 stands. Eight career titles. Half of the titles on this show. There's 16 combined. Well, Shannon O'Keefe, 10 pin down. The women's coach at McHenry in O'Fallon, Illinois, outside St. Louis. Former All-American at Arkansas State, Jordan Richards steps up. Convincing win, Kelly, over Josie Barnes in match one. Yeah, 236, clean the entire game, sticking with the same piece of equipment in her hand. What has she got? Let's find out. Whoa. Leaves the washout. Wash out. One, two, four, ten. She was able to get the ball right early on. You see Shannon's break point is a little bit closer to her. Right at 4-5, all the way down here. Much further right, needs to be parallel inside. Right around there, 44 feet is there. But she leaves the washout, stands alone. Must take that head pin and slide it over into the 10. Lots of cover. Does it! Nice execution for Jordan Richard. Perfectly executed. Watch the head pin just directly kicks itself into the 10 pin. 
Nailed it. Very easy spare to wrap around the head pin around pin number 10. But just the right ball speed, right angle, crushes it, converts the washout. Team USA member. Get some help. And a smile to her ball reps. <laughs> we'll take it. Yeah, gonna walk back there for some information. Didn't like that shot at all, so two things right now. On the right lane, she didn't have recovery when she missed outward. On the left lane, she didn't have hold when she missed inward. So now we're getting that little bit of a red flag kind of zone. Um, I made the move, hooks too much, doesn't hook enough. Yeah. You can hear him talk, might be a ball change coming up. O'Keefe, sixth show of the season. Look out. 2 8 10. 2 8 10 and a split. Very difficult spare to make here. <laughs> Josie in that first match had the left lane hooking more in the front but tighter in the back. Shannon sliding, look, 26 with her feet, 17 16 at the arrows. Right around that break point zone, that's about 43 feet, folks, right around there. It's a 37 foot pad and we're playing much, much longer due to those new installs. She's going to take two and move on to frame number three. pre-match she stayed very patient this week found the adjustments from pair to pair throughout the 22 games with that 212.9 average pretty tricky as did you I'm sure and the rest of the bowlers in the elite field adding into play here this week in Minnesota absolutely Dave pair to pair they were a little tricky just again because of the new installs so also you're crossing with variety style players that too can lead to inconsistencies of where the track is breaking down. But high on this left lane leaves the 3 6 10. We heard her in practice talking to a rep. As long as I get to 8 9 10, I feel confident. On a short pattern, though, you really can't miss inward. Most often enough, the misses have to be outside or further to the right for the right handed player. Covers nicely 3 6 10. We told three match her execution in big moments has been so important to this great season. Including winning the Queens and Reno. Jordan Richard won in Pennsylvania. It's only her second career TV show here today. Last week her first in St. Pete. Five nine. Wow, within the first three frames, a couple of question marks. Dave going through the players' heads right now. Not really sure what what's going to happen in that like pattern it. earlier. There's some, there were definitely a few escalators on that 3D graph. And um, again, create hold. you got to keep going further and further left. We, the women got very deep last night in between the fourth and fifth arrow just to try to create enough hold down the lane. Hooks out the spare and covers a 5.9. So there's that 3D graph. So here's that first set of escalators. Right here is with a taper. But look, that big gap right here, and then there's another one. So you're ready in about board 18, 19, 20 at the arrows, where it starts to really taper off again. That means we're going to have to take that jump and jump into that next zone left and try to create more holds. So now you're going to see some of this, my little taper here. My finger's not pressing too hard, but trying to get that more slope angle deeper inside or deeper laid on point. It's all about adjustments as the lanes transition. Pretty good shot, four pin. Yeah, good move by Jordan there. You can see she went to a cleaner cover, more pearlized cover, a little shine to it to give her a little more push through the front in the mid lane. It tips forward. See her feet still sliding, 28, 17 at the arrows. There's that eight at the break point. You can see it just getting a little high in that one three. But a nine count on this. Whoa, but whiffs on the four pin. That is a big miss there for Jordan Richard. Something she did last week, Dave. Mm. And she tells pre match that you know, being on TV is really different having the fans down lane on either side. Usually the fans, of course, are behind you and just missed by that much. So it was a different situation. The TV, cameras, the lights. It's a lot hotter out here. Lanes transition quickly. And Shannon O'Keefe 
Being a true champion, Kelly, like yourself, with six major championships, you know when your opponent has made a mistake and you really push down on that accelerator. Yeah, not very often enough you can give your opponent an opportunity like this when you have an open door, missing a single pin spare. Sliding about 25, clear paths of the pocket, nice and controllable motion. Didn't have the left lane, see what her adjustment is over here. Help. Shannon. You heard her help, help, help. Ooh. Physically, that just was not executed well. Kind of pushed the ball into the lane as much, not nearly projected onto the lane. Four step approach, steps way left with that left foot. Yeah, you can see just kind of pull down from the top of the swing. Whenever there's a pull down motion, hand closes, shoulder closes, miss target inward. Covers three, three, six, ten. And gets her mark to keep this very close in match number two. Let's see how Jordan responds to the open. Defeated Shannon O'Keefe in that match in Mechanicsburg. 222 to 194. Rehashing some memories here right now. It's been a great season for Jordan. Breakthrough. Great shot by Jordan. I said misses have to be right. That one leaked out a little bit further. She's able to get the ball just to tip up enough. Come back. Swishy, swishy. Almost swishy strike for like 2 8. Way, way right, 4-5 with a break point. Really rolls the bucket there. Fist pump in the air, catches the break after missing the four pin. Realignment on the left lane. So she learned a lot. The Team USA camp, along with you, so many great bowlers, Mark Baker, especially with her approach. Footwork, very beneficial. Trying to take advantage of that now, does with a big strike. A 12 pin lead. A double the fourth, the fifth and sixth for Jordan Richard. And we've got a great match here in match two, trying to climb the ladder. Liz Culkin is the top seed in Egan, Minnesota tonight. The match two, close match. Shannon O'Keefe, Jordan Richard, only 12 pins separate the two. Stephanie Johnson now joined by Josie Barnes. All right, Josie, tough match with two seven tens in there. Can you share with the viewers what happens uh, during the practice? Yeah, so, you know, I thought my practice was a little wishy-washy. I was trying to decide between two balls. Uh, I went with the precision. I thought the first shot, maybe I got a little firm, so I stuck with it and threw a couple good shots after that. But in hindsight, I actually think that that ball was losing energy a little bit too early. So I ended up switching to something that was a little cleaner, uh, a little more responsive to get back to the one three, and it worked out. I was just a little late. All right, thanks, Josie. Back to you, Dave. All right, Stephanie, thanks. So, Kelly, your assessment of her assessment. Yeah, she thought the ball might have been burning up and losing speed a little too much energy. 7-10 usually is a result of that. So when she went to the bigger ball but then moved further left, sliding close to where Jordan was, retained a bit more energy as it stayed in the oil path longer and uh, definitely got to the pocket. So the right move, unfortunately, just one or two frames too late. Okay, responds with a big strike. Trucking through the last three frames. Sliding 25, 14 at the arrows, gets to that seven point right there. Just enough to slow down and get back to the one three pocket, mixes up the pins. Catches the strike up in the seventh frame now, looking for her double. A great run the last few years on tour. Five shows in 2016, two titles last year. You're right. Yes! It was right. A couple this year, including a major and a big year lead in the Player of the Year points race to boot. Memorable season for the head women's coach at McKendry. Richard by two pins. Ida her seven looks for the turkey. Go up by 12. Ten, ten. ten pin. You heard the words from her mouth. See it, see it, see it. Really very well executed. 
great delivery, physical execution on line, on path, bringing 10 pin stands. Hazard 10 pin has your mark. Brent Prentice, proprietor of Cedarvale Lane. A great host to the tour this year. He and his staff have just been tremendous, Kelly. They were, Dave, all week long. The, the staff went out of the way. There was water, snacks, fruit, food provided for the players downstairs in the paddock area. Very complimentary, very well attentive to the ladies' needs. All around his staff was wonderful. We had a full house for the Pro-Am, 12 on a pair. Wow. Made for a long night for the ladies, but really recognizing the fans coming out to support the event was fabulous. Great week. Thanks, Brent. Eight for Jordan Richard. Wow. Crutches 10 to the pit. Those pins had no chance. Great shot. Sliding just a bit deeper. You can see further in at the arrows now that 9 10 break point. Nice crisp apple strike right there. It's a beautiful volume. It's a, one of the. I think it's the sleeping noise of all bowlers to hear that, that cracking of the pins. On, on. Good shot there by Shannon. She's got a much smoother path, a little bit more direct online comparison to Jordan. See how long the ball goes, much more straighter before it just starts to tip up and change direction that last six to eight feet. Requires much energy for the ball to do that. Hard plastic for the 10 pin. There's 10 pin. Last year, one in Richmond. This year, Reno, Nevada. Kelly? There she Second is. major. Her power purple, Dave, as we call it. Shannon does bowl fearless. She really does. She has a, an intent about herself, a determination, a fire, and a power within her. You can see the rage. She's been close so many times. I think she's had a few seconds in the U.S. Opens and some Queen presentations and shows, but definitely working off momentum from last year's season closer at the Tour Championship. She was a two seed in Reno, beat Brianna Cote. The top seed in the championship match. There's another nice shot. Another 10 pin, keeping yeah. us very close. Same direct picture and path. It looked really, really good. Again, just keeping it really more in front of her. You can see the ball. Three goes into the six, five goes into eight, but the six pin just doesn't say, hey, not now, don't need to kiss you. Just going to stay right there. Falls flat in front of the 10. Step ladder bowling today here in Egan. Rocio Rostrepo, Columbia, qualified second. We'll meet the winner of this match. Liz Culkin, as we talked about, is our top seed here today in the Twin Cities. That needs help. Crosses all the way over and leaves a six pin, almost a Brooklyn strike. We definitely have a close match here. Dave gonna come down to that 10th and final frame. Really misses inward here. Kinda drops the thumb in, turns the hand in. As you can see, no, no projection to the right, really far inside. Doesn't quite get it far enough right down the lane. Leaves the single pin. I have to wonder if that four pin's gonna come back on her in this last 10th frame, Dave. Compelling finish on the way here. I mean, we spoke with Jordan last week in St. Petersburg, Florida, and she said, my expectations are when I get on TV to win. Well, here she is with a chance to beat Shannon O'Keefe. Yeah, Dave, let me Won't play out the, the scenario for you. Double and eight, and she's gonna advance. But she holds her future in her hand. Yes. There's one. Jordan told us her role model for many years has been none other than Kelly Kulik. <laughs> and we said, well, that's great, but why? She said, well, tremendous bowler, obviously great finisher. 
on TV with all the titles you've had. Well, here's Jordan now with a chance to finish. Strike an eight to shut out Shannon O'Keefe. We've got one. How about a second? Uh, no. Three six. Yeah, exactly. They lose three six. Just insider target again. First one was professional, professionally executed. Really good under the pressure situation. This one, it's a challenging condition too. By by no means is it is it a an easier shot to to feed the ball to the pocket. Definitely trying to control the one three pocket. So she scores one ninety seven. Up steps O'Keefe. Been in the situation many times before. A double and four for a win. The power purple in Viking country. It's kind of all set up, isn't it? It is. She's hit the pocket the last four frames in a row. She needs to knock down 10 right here. Does she have the first one? 10 pin. On. Well executed again. The ball just really, really long down the lane. Just not enough to get back and crunch the one three. Leaves the flat 10 again. But and she is a bench, champion, yep. Jordan Richard is going to advance. Rocio Rostrepo, the number two seed, awaits Jordan Richard. He is bidding for her second career title. Exciting finish here in our second match. Okay, come on. Go get it, okay? You can move. You have a great point. You know you're getting yourself, okay? You can move. One ninety seven, one ninety two, Jordan Richard from Tecumseh, Michigan is through the take on the two seed Rocio Rostrepo. Tremendous match on the way. It's the PWBA Tour on CBS Sports Network. Star from Colombia. Will help tap on the four pin, but it stands. Garcia was the number two seed at the Valley Bowl this past, I believe, May when we were in California on the West Coast swing. Number two seed here tonight. Looking to gain her first title of this season and add to her resume. Four, and there is some energy. I have to for Rocio back on TV. I do. I enjoy watching Rocio bowl. I mean, every shot is 100% effort. Fist pump, even on a spare. She's totally committed. Each and every delivery, really a joy to watch on the lanes. Very energetic, very exciting for the fans tuning in. Now Jordan Richard back up. She's seen all the transition so far here today. Wow. Crunches 10 back into the pit. Best amateur bowling continues on Tuesday night. USA Bowling U-12 Team Championships take center stage from the International Training and Research Center in Arlington, Texas. Tuesday night at 8 Eastern right here on CBS Sports Network. The future of the sport on display. It's fun to watch those kids. Man, they love bowling. Frame number two for Jordan. She didn't make a ball change starting this match. Sticks with it on the left lane. Oh, the drive trouble. Four, six, ten. Left lane has definitely been been very much a red flag for the players. They're moving further and further left. Eight, nine, ten. You can see the ball tip up. It's got great shape to it. It just has to come from a deeper part of the lane. Off that move there, I, I would be making it a four and one or a five and two. Just really get more steepness with the front part, more angle, create more hold. And see if she can shape the one three. Go back to Stephanie Johnson. 
After speaking with the Storm reps before Rocio's match, uh, they mentioned to me she's actually throwing the same bowling ball two different layouts. You'll see she's changing now to a pin up on the right lane. It's a, a big asymmetrical with a strong cover, so she feels like she can project it to the right uh, with a stronger finish down lane. Thanks so much, Stephanie. That pin-up bowling ball is going to allow the core in the bowling ball to tumble down the lane. And by that tumble, it'll get it to push down the lane and then stand up and change direction. Just like that high in the head pin, stands a 3-6. I did talk to Rocio. Dave and I both interviewed her. And one thing she did mention to me was, in past shows, Rocio was just a four-step approach. See how that right leg is lunging forward? It used to be an even deeper lunge due to that four-step approach. But now at five, it makes her four-step a little bit shorter, more of a power step. And one thing Rocio has is fantastic knee bend and athleticism. 3-6 takes care of business. As we mentioned, okay. the prior segment, she's had some health issues, battling elbow problem, left leg problem, kidney stones in Reno during Queens, had to be rushed to the ER. It has not been the healthiest of years for Rocio. No, Dave, she's had a whirlwind of, of things just come her way that have not been the greatest, but something she's dealt with mentally. Looking for her first title of this season. Under grueling conditions, last year captured the Cubica AMF PWBA Sonoma County Open, defeating Brandi Branca. 203-168 in the title match. And we remembered how emotional Kelly she was afterward. We asked her about that emotion. She said, that's just who I am. And it all came out in the post-match interview after that big victory for her last season. Perfect shot in the 1-3 pocket. Blast through all 10. You hear the music playing in the background, Dave. Every player is allowed to select a strike song. We Love know Liz Colkin has Love the, that. the New York one. I like Rocio's, very up and peppy. What's yours? Uh, good question. I don't know. I'll, when I get on TV, I'll let you know. Which will be next week. <laughs> Positive thinking. Seven pin. Jordan's making the right move. She keeps moving further, deeper inside the lane. Trying to find that patch to the one three. Just not enough power to knock over the seven. Josie Barnes, Shannon O'Keefe. Dispatched by Jordan. Seven, there is the spirit. Ball chain seems to be right, sticking with it. I think she kind of cued over ball reps, just, hey, what, what's going on? Make the move. It's going to be a big move here, maybe at least a two. I would say four after the last shot. Jordan, a four-time All-American, Arkansas State, three-time Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year nationally. A couple conference titles, a lot of accolades. Two shots like that. I'm feeling it. See, there's her strike song, Eminem, appropriate for the uh, Detroit, Michigan area. He's a a resident of that lovely state. Fourth frame to go up by 20. Looks for the double. Doesn't find the pocket. Two, four, five, seven. Another thing I picked up too, Dave, is Rocio likes to dig her fingers into the bowling ball. If you watch her ring finger next time it goes in, it really kind of goes past the first, the first digit there, um, right there, and she digs even further between the first and second joint. Hmm. After that visit to the ER in Reno, had to take some time off, lost some weight, unable to work out. That's part of her routine throughout the tournament week. Can't cover seven stands, open frame for Rocio. So she's just starting to feel better, as she told us, really at this point of the year now 
into August. It really took a long time to recover. Yeah, she even hurt her elbow before the U.S. Open. And, and one thing Rocio definitely relies on is her physical execution. She really feels better and stronger when she's in the gym and able to have those workouts to keep her endurance up for these short bursts of tour stops or sprints having to bowl 16 games on Friday, coming back Saturday for another eight games in the morning and then cutting to the top 12 for another six. With this event, we bowled 16 and then six more this morning to cut to the top five field for tonight's telecast. All 10 back for Rocio. Nice bounce back. Runs tonight at 8 Eastern for continued coverage of golf's final major. It's the PGA Championship Clubhouse Report presented by City only on the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. Fifth round, go up by 12. Does it. Jordan Richard, big strike. Sliding 27, 15, still way right. So again, as I said, you need to create angle. You need to create hold, get steeper through the front. She's got great control of her hand. It's just talking about Rocio's hand. If you watch Jordan put her hand on the ball, she really spreads out the index finger. And what some coaches talk about is having that ramp as the ball rolls off between those two fingers to get more end over end controllable roll of the ball. Really reads the pattern very well from okay. front to back. Six frame looking to go up by 22. Five shot and three six stand here for Jordan Richard. So excited to be back on the show. She told us pre match. And she was disappointed last week, didn't bowl her best. She said, I'm not going to dwell on that. I'm looking forward. And that's her goal, Dave. Keep moving forward. Day to day, lane to lane, shot to shot, just move forward. Great attitude. 3 6 up, 3 6 down. There's the spare. Great match in match three. Rochepo Richard head to head in Egan, Minnesota. We'll conclude this third match. When we return, it's the PWBA Tour on CBS Sports Network. Halfway home, match three here in Egan, Minnesota. It's Jordan Richard, 22 years old from Tecumseh, Michigan. She has a 10-pin lead on Rocio Restrepo of Columbia. And let's break down her left lane play, Kelly. Yeah, Dave, we're going to watch her deliver here when she striked and when she didn't. Sliding roughly the same area, 20 to 29 with her feet. Watch her hand. Waits for it behind it. 18, 17 at the arrow. So good projection and everything. Falls through, but now watch the second shot. This is where she didn't strike. She went high. Still slide at the same point. Hand starts to stay behind. Close down a little too soon. The launch angle's inside. Doesn't quite project it as far right down the lane. So not as much steepness. So you can see at the arrows, it's almost identical in terms of the target. But it really has to do with the thumb release speed and the launch angle in the front part of the lane. Second one just closed down a split second too early. Whenever that occurs, it's again due to either timing, swing, release, or grip. But for that shot right there, most likely was just a quick turn of the hand inside. Rocio can even things up here. Down 10 pins, works on a strike, sixth frame. Looking for a third strike of the match. Does it. Great shot. Stephanie is joined by Shannon O'Keefe. Shannon, I noticed during your practice you were playing to the right, and when your match started, you started substantially to the left. Can you talk us through your thought process in doing so? Yeah, so during the week, I was able to play to the right for the first game, uh, but once it went away, it went away really fast. So that's about the length of practice. So once it happened, I knew I was going to have to jump left and then create hold by angle. Okay. Thanks so much, Shannon. Back to you, Dave. Thanks so much, Shannon and Stephanie, for that little report. That pattern definitely a shorter pattern. You got to keep chasing it, chasing it, even jump sometimes. Strepo comes in high and leaves a 3 6. Left lane very problematic for the ladies, Dave. 
there really is. As, as much often as it's enough, you know, even though I'm watching my ball reaction go down the lane, I must also watch my competitors. And from there, it has to be a bigger move. 3 6 10 leave or Greek church is easily a four board or five board move inward. Five and one, five and two, four and two. Chase it left, give yourself hold. Covers nicely. Horacio Kelly talked us pre match about really being focused on her tempo and not being hesitant in making decisions. What are you seeing from Rocio in terms of those two things? Right now, she's really committed, Dave. She talked to the ball reps during the break, and she's using two different balls. She just took a giant step left on the right lane. She has to do the same thing on the left. She was confident all week long doing that and didn't hesitate at all. I think because there's only 10 frames and there's nothing to lose, she has to trust her gut what worked for her while we're in this position. 10 pin for Jordan Richard, pretty good shot. I did notice that her tempo was a bit not slower, but maybe calmer and softer to where she was still able to generate speed, but even be posting at the foul line. Jordan Richard, just fantastic shot there. Six pin lays down in front. And again, as high scoring as they were last week, a, a 220 game was, or 230 game on this condition was considered almost like a 250 game. Great action today here in the Twin Cities. Next week, we're headed to Columbus, Ohio. Great month of August with all these live events on CBS Sports Network. August 25th, the Cubic AMF Players Championship from the Dallas Metroplex Tour Championship. September 19th, that completes the road to Richmond. Last year won by Shannon O'Keefe. What a crowd we had in Richmond, Virginia last year. Expecting more great bowling in 2018. Left lane still not cooperating. Just still not cooperating enough to get the ball down the lane. If the lane was 15 feet shorter, it'd be perfect. Unfortunately enough, let's see, sliding, sliding 30, 31, so still not a big enough mood. You can see just 20 at the arrows, 19 at the arrows, no push to the right, no free push to the right. So there's a couple choices either Again, make the leap. Get off the balance beam, make the leap, move left, or ball change. But it is definitely a physically move with her feet to the left. Can't cover the 310, Kelly, so that's a big open this late in the match. Liz Colkin, three straight TV shows. Is the top seed, but as she told us pre-match, look, I'm used to climbing the ladder <laughs> on my wins. For both of her victories on tour, she's done that. Last week, the number two seed. Now, for the first time in her career, she's the number one seed. She awaits the winner of this match. Restrepo up 12. Big shot. All 10 back for Rocio. Yeah, Rocio really in the left lane now. She's really compensated and found her adjustment on the right lane. You can see 20 exactly over the fourth hour. A little splice action there. It's how heavy the ball rolls forward, though. Right here. Come on. Ten pins go to the graveyard, Dave. She's working on a strike, looking for a double. Foundation frame time. Just to put her up by 22. Come on. Still Eight using frame open really hurts Jordan. Yeah, right yeah still using two different balls. She's using the pin down strong asymmetric on the left lane. So that is going to slow down and read sooner. She also has to make the move inward. Good shot, right move. Leaves the bucket standing alone. 2-4-5 without the eight pin, so just the 2-4-5. She's sliding much deeper now than Jordan. 34, almost the same point at the arrows, 20-21. So much, much steeper angle through the front portion of the lane. I think she's in the right part of the lane now, Dave. I think it's a, all of this is a move of making a ball change. Got a ball. Good cover. And up until this point, Dave, the women did not know the pattern. Other past events, it was released during the 30 minutes prior to our practice session starting. 
these last two weeks, and I'm assuming the next week we will not know the pattern. So the women are reading their ball reaction, making moves, making changes based on what they're seeing themselves. Big shot for Richard. Down 12, ninth frame. Would love a strike here. Gets a strike here. Shrapnel on the pit. And we are lined up for a great finish. Again, her fate's in her own hands. Last time on this lane, she left 310, missed it. Previous to that, she left a 36, converted. Only has a strike in frame number four. True test. Can't find the pocket. Six, seven, ten. Same part of the lane. Again, sliding 30, never got deep enough. Maybe trying to do it ball speed alone. But unfortunately, it was just missing the move. Just never got deep enough. Trying to kick the six across the deck to the seven. And Rossi on the bench sees a big opening. Just needs good count. Yeah, four she should pins. advance. Just four, that's all. She knows it, too. Tough for Jordan. Open to the eighth and tenth. Mm. Looks like that's going to do a rain in this match. Needs four. Gets ten. Gets the win. Rocio Rostrepo is through to the championship match. She knocks off Jordan Richard in match number three. And Liz Culkin, our top seed in her third straight TV show, looks for a second win of the season. That trophy, prize money, is on the line in Egan, Minnesota today. Coming up next, the championship match. Culkin, Rostrepo. Well, thanks, Liz. Ready for the championship match. Liz Culkin, our top seed, takes on Rocio Ostrepo as we check out the step ladder bracket. Kelly here today in Egan, Minnesota. Yeah, Jordan really kicking it out of the gate. 236 over Josie Barnes, 203. Close one in match number two. Just edges out 197, 192 over Shannon O'Keefe, running up for player of the year. Rocio Ostrepo, though, she ran into a bus, loses 201 to 170. Now, Rocio. We'll go up against the number one seed, Liz Culkin, third straight TV appearance. Already has a win in her belt with the Women's U.S. Open. Now she's going to kick it off, looking to extend her resume for her second title of the season, the third one of her career. Going for that trophy. Big prize money today here in Egan. What a great way to wrap up National Bowling Day. Hashtag National Bowling Day. There are free bowling games going on all over the country. Check your local center if you haven't already. From Schenectady, New York, near Albany, capital city of New York State. Four pin for Liz Culkin back on TV again. Last week was very disappointing for her. It's going in as a number two seed. Again, working off that success, but she did learn a valuable lesson. The picture may not be the same. It's who can kind of take that fuzzy picture and make it clear, make the adjustments faster. She's taking that information, watched from the sidelines, and wants to find her second title this season. Whiffed on that four, she knew when she released it. Early open frame, some jitters there for Liz. Now Rocio, God help your approach when you see your opponent miss a single pin conversion. Extra boost of confidence. Rossi, one of 10 international players in the field this event this week. That's got a real hurry and a light hit, one, two left. Lost control of that one. During the commercial break, she talked to the ball reps and they said, get through the ball, be aggressive through it. Well, she was definitely aggressive, almost a two, three towards the gutter on the outside portion of the lane. 
You need some uh, bumper rails to get it back from there, but that's okay. She leaves the one two spare. Covers a one two. We didn't have a 300 today, but had any player role during the game during this telecast, they would have received a $10,000 bonus courtesy. GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. I believe GoBowling.com was at Watkins Glen last week for NASCAR. Really engaging the fans, setting up a lane, allowing them to participate. Very cool. Exciting event. I'm feeling the road to Richmond. <laughs> Come on, we mentioned NASCAR. Black and white checkered flag. I can see it. Second frame, championship match. Oh. Nice Race shot, 10 pin. Good shot by Rocio. Wasn't quite controlling the pocket in the last match, but 1-3 was executed. Did the ball rolling to hit the five. Three pin, said it goes straight back. Six pin falls flat in front. Left side take care of itself. Fifteen years, Team Columbia. Seven years, Junior Team Columbia. He's represented the country very well. Just came back from the Central American Games. Has ten pin. Let's go back to Stephanie. Speaking with the Brunswick rep before the match, um, they're going to go with a mid-strong asymmetrical ball that Liz actually hasn't thrown all week. Um, she has the left lane hooking more, so rather changing alignment, she's going to use speed um, instead. Thanks so much, Stephanie. That is true. The left lane is hooking for all the players that have bowled on that lane tonight. Stay aggressive, a little more ball speed, but leaves the same lead four pin on the right lane. Inside of board 20, about 18, 19 at the arrows. Eight at the break point, as you see the yellow pin on that ball migrate and stand up as it rolls forward into the pins. Only one pin stands alone. Went straight at it, looks like she's gonna hook at it this time. She's got it, <laughs> she's happy about that. No open frame this time. Average through 22 games to make the show. Top seed. Many of the ladies, the blocks were different. They had higher scoring first rounds, lower second. Liz was very consistent round to round. Really stayed out of trouble, like she said, the 150 games and kept things at 190, 200 pace. Trying to find that 1 3 pocket. There's a four pin. Good looking shot. Good shot. No strikes yet for either player. Two and one moves are typical for league conditions, but on this challenging sport pattern, it has to be larger. Three and one, four and two, five and two again. It's hard to get out of your comfort zone. Speaking of which, yep, first time as the number one seed we talked about. So she wasn't sure how she was going to handle it. Takes care of the four pin, hooks it, handle her time from the start of the show at four o'clock local time here in Egan up to the time she gets to bowl. I mean, it's. An hour and a half to wait, it's not easy. Yeah, and we have a quick turnaround time from when the ladies finish all of qualifying in that last round of six to when the TV show is set up and ready to go. Shout out to parents Ricky and Mark back home in the Schenectady area. For biggest fans. Double wood, two eight left for Rosio. Interested to see the shot again is to be aggressive. 20, 19 at the arrow. See as the pin spinning as it's by our access point. And the ball changes, it rolls forward, but it really has lost a lot of energy.
228 has it. Are you looking for some great PWBA gear? Then visit the official online store of the PWBA at shoppwba.com. Still using two different balls on each lane. Pin down strong asymmetric on the left and the pin up strong one on the right lane. Good shot. She knew it off her hand. Blitzes through the rack. All ten back in the pit. And we finally have a strike, Kelly, in our championship match. Yes, we do, Dave. She was felt comfortable on the left lane earlier. Now she's got to get the right lane really deep. 22. Liz Culkin's paying attention. You'll see how far deep she is. Ball sets up, rolls forward. Now if she could just figure out the right lane, lane number six that we're bowling on for the TV pair. High again, three pin. Could have been much worse. She'll take a single pin conversion try. Four step approach again, a little bit short and more of a push away. Sliding 31, 19 at the arrows, 9, 10. That ball really stands up quick when it sees the friction. It's not a slow left turn, it's a sharp left turn. Our first career title, number five seed. So Pika Kansas climbed the ladder then, climbed the ladder in Orlando this year as the five seed to win the US Women's Open. We talked about her being the two seed in St. Pete last week, and now first time ever as the number one seed. Make a ball change over here, consulting with her ball rep to the side. Do you like it? I, I think the first move after going four pin, four pin, four pin, I think she just needs to go left. I, Really, again, Dave, most of the, the same thing that's been happening with most of the women on the show is they're just not making large enough moves. Move four, move five. But goes to the solid cover, doesn't respond so much. Yeah, come on! Let's go! That's her 10. What a shot for Liz Culkin, her best of the championship match. Crushes the pants. So you can see she's sliding a little bit deeper, but the solid cover doesn't respond as much to friction as the pearl. Liked it off her hand, didn't second guess herself. She said she was smart all week with her moves. That's exactly what she did. Her first strike. Rocio looks for the first double of this championship match. Fifth frame to go up by 20 pins. Does it. That's the lane she's been trying to figure out. A great shot, all 10 back. Yeah, that was really a smart move. Other finishes this week. Brianna Cote just missing out. Josie Barnes had a good game the last game to stay ahead of her. Daniel McEwen also front runner, second behind Shannon. Hall of Famer Liz Johnson, Birgit Pupler, Pupler from uh, Germany. And then Missy Pargan, she had a tie last night. Defeated Sydney Bromit in that 12th position. And then our fellow sideliner, you see Stephanie Johnson was right up there in the midst of that top 12, had a great week herself. Looking for the turkey, 30 pin lead. It does push. Up by 30, championship match, Rocio Rostrepo. Hoping for her first win of 2018. She's in great shape with a 30 pin lead. Turkey for Rocio Rostrepo has given her a 30 pin lead on Liz Coke in our top seed championship match from here in Egan, Minnesota, outside the Twin Cities. Who takes home the title tonight? Trails by 30 pins down to Rocio. Three, four pins in a row. The three pin makes the ball change, packs all 10. Will it work on the right lane? All 10 back, 20 pin match. Two in a row for Liz Culkin, watch right here. 19, 18, that's solid cover. See the green pin, the bowling ball, it spins, it spins, it's tall, it's tall. It hits the eight pin right in the face. Solid cover was a good choice for her. Doesn't see the friction as much, slows down, smoother. Ball's not as quite as tired as the other one might have been. 
So you told us pre-match 2018 has been a year of highlights. The major championship, making three straight shows. Work, 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 Looking work. For another win. Yes! It works all right. Trip of the 10. And things are very competitive in this championship match. Four-step delivery. 31, 32, deeper, more smoother reaction. That's the road to Richmond right there. Not that sharp left turn we see, just that smooth left turn. But Rocio is back on this right lane. She struck last time over here. Looking to take a lead. Two up 20, and a four bagger. Four pin. Nice shot. She liked it. Yep, you heard her too. I asked her in the interview day, she's always working on something. I asked as an athlete, does it ever become not work? Can you just go out there and bowl? And she said no. Sliding 34, though, on that one. Almost the same exact zone now as Liz Culkin. Heavy, heavy roll forward. Not enough for the two pin to kick out the four. Every shot, it's a big shot from now on. Rocio said she took some time off after the elbow injury. After East Hartford went back to Wichita, worked with her college coaches there, and see her host family, said it really was a great recharge mm -hmm. for her personally and professionally. Get her game back in gear. Been so frustrated by the injuries. Feeling good right now. Overcome so much. The elbow, mm -hmm. now their knee, and she's got pain with her leg. It doesn't hurt when she's bowling. When she's not bowling is when she struggles with the pain. Kidney stone. She's really overcome so many health issues this past season alone. Hook. And a hook. Two pin stance. Her lead now is cut only to eight pins. But she's doing what she's supposed to do as a bowler. Again, tough condition. We saw medium high scoring. 190 to 220, good score in this condition. From past matches, 236, 197s, 2-0, the last match for Rocio to get here. There's a spare. We've got ourselves a match. Culkin unable to strike the first four frames. The title tilt. Now looks for the four bagger, eight frame, and to take a two pin win. Stat pack will break it down for you. Big shot in the end. All 10 down. Liz Culkin really, really confident in these last four shots. No second guessing. Same spot on the lane. Eight, nine. It was an exact replica of the shot before. Ball deflects slightly, but the five pin falls magically down. Four strikes in a row, looking for five now, going in the ninth frame, just a two-pin lead. Right here. Give her an advantage going in the tenth frame as she strikes here. Open for a five-bagger, 12-pin lead. Foundation frame, absolutely huge shot. What do you say, Liz? Seven-pin, nudged, but stands. She liked it. She did. That's amazing. She just comes off the right lane, gets up on the left lane, and goes. She's very quick with her routine and her tempo. You can see the ball just push a little bit longer down the lane. Doesn't quite set up as to the 1-3 pocket. Two pin flutters. Kind of wants to go straight back. Not enough to, to steamroll over the seven. Oh my goodness. Whips on a oh, single Liz. pin conversion. The seven for Liz Culkin could not come at a worse time. And the lead grows for Rocio on the bench. Wow. 
I'm just taken by surprise. Dave, she missed the four pin with the plastic ball. She shoots with the other two hooking at it. With a ball change, it just wasn't enough. I would uh, I would have just taken the lane condition out of play and, and definitely used the plastic ball and go straighter at it. Unfortunately, just a bad mistake by Liz. Let's see what Orchia does with the 11 pin lead. In her ninth frame. Works on a spare. <laughs> Takes advantage with a big strike. Orchia's got a good lead. If she strikes out here in the 10th frame, she'll shoot 235, and Liz Colton will have no chance to catch her. She just needs to stay clean, Rocio, right here in the 10th frame. Re -rack. Re -rack. Calls re -rack. for a re-rack here. Wants to take her time. Good time. No hurry now. Make it come. So much this year. Health-wise. Emotionally trying to get back to the top of her game. A lot of positive talk, reinforcement. Rocio's known to talk to herself, spare and strike to shut out Lewis Culkin. Needs good count for the championship. She'll get nine. She's got a victory in Egan, Minnesota today. Rocio Ostrepo has won her fourth career PWBA Tour title. Congrats to Rocio overcoming so much in 2018 to earn the victory today here in the Twin Cities. There's Ten Pan, first title of 2018 for Rocio. And her second show. Her husband's so proud. Great week for Liz Culkin. Top seed, first time in her career, but falls short against the number two seed, Rocio Ostrepo, in the championship match. We'll wrap things up from Egan, Minnesota, right after this. A moment of the match, ninth frame. Rocio Ostrepo, Kelly needed it, and she got it. Yes, she did, Dave. That Christmas of the pins going back 10 straight down. She liked it, and she is your champion. Stephanie Johnson now joined by Lee Sant and Chris Zant, the owners of BowlerX.com. Trophy presentation time, Stephanie. Lee, trophy presentation, please. Absolutely. First off, I just want to quickly say that uh, BowlerX.com, we are so proud to support this organization, the PWBA, and these women. It's great. <laughs> Very proud. Rocio, this is your second show this season. Is there anybody you'd like to thank? Oh, first of all, I want to congratulate all the finalists. Liz had an amazing run. Uh, Shannon, Josie, and Jordan. Uh, I want to thank BowlerX.com, Cedar Bell Lanes. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Nationwide, Pepsi, Cubic IMF, Go Bowling, USBC, BPAA, and my sponsors, Rotocrep, Vice, and Logo Infusion. I really appreciate everything you guys do for me. Uh, thank you, everyone, for supporting the PWBA. And Rocio, you are officially on the road to Richmond. What are you most looking forward to?